All right, I wanted to give a little bit more information on completing the square. And we know completing the square is a method that we can use to solve a quadratic. We can actually use it for, uh, for other things too. But right here, right now, we're gonna think about solving a quadratic for a second. And when we looked at the uh, zero three, the lesson, and we saw completing the square, we looked specifically when our leading coefficient was a one. And things are easier when the leading coefficient is a one. Factoring's easier, complete squares easier, quadratic formula I'm sure is a little bit easier. Things are just easier, but that's not always gonna be the case. We have to be able to deal with this when we have a leading coefficient like two right there, okay? So if we're trying to solve a quadratic, we're trying to find zeros, solutions, x-intercepts, roots, we're trying to find that we have to set our quadratic equal to zero to begin with. But because we're trying to complete the square, it does make it a lot easier for us if we move our constant to the other side. So I am going to subtract one to give us negative one equals two x squared plus 12x. And when we complete the square, okay, we're getting in those, those steps, we group the x's. Here we go. We group the x's. But we have to remember it's different a little bit when we have a leading coefficient other than a 1. Because there is a 2 right there, and completing the square needs that to be a 1. We need that to be It needs to be a 1. So we're going to force that to be a one by factoring out a two. Okay, so the left side is still negative one. Over here, I'm going to factor out a two, leaving me with x squared plus six x. Okay, it's a little different. There's a two, there's a two in front of our x squared. We have we need inside the parentheses before you say your little rhyme, which we'll say in a second, before we do that, we have to get a one in front of the x squared in our parentheses, in our grouping, we need a leading coefficient of one. So now we say our rhyme. We take the coefficient in front of the x, we cut it in half and we square it next and we paste it on the inside, Boom. right there. Half of six was three, three plus three is three, so squ three squared is nine. And whatever we add to this side, we have to add to this side over here. What did we just add to this side? Think about it. We did not just add nine. When we put a nine right there, that's on the inside of this set of parentheses with a two on the outside. We really just added 18 to the right side. Whatever we put on one side of the equation, we have to add to the other side. It's huge. Now we simplify just like we've done before. That is 17. There's a two outside of the set of parentheses. This set of parentheses is a perfect square. This is x plus three squared. <clears throat> we're trying to solve, sorry, we're trying to solve our equation. So we're gonna divide both sides by two. Divide both sides by two, we're left with 17 over two equals x plus three squared in order to undo that being squared we're going to take the square root of both sides so we have i'm going to bring it up here plus or minus the square root of 17 over the square root of 2 i'm going to break that down right there equals x plus 3. we do have a radical in the denominator in order to get rid of that radical in the denominator i'm going to rationalize this by multiplying by the square root of two on the top and the bottom. This gives me positive negative root 34 over two equals 
x plus 3. Again, we're solving for x, so we're going to subtract 3 from both sides, leaving us with negative 3 plus or minus root 34 over 2. And that is what x equals. We kept it um, exact. <laughs> we didn't type stuff into our calculator. We, we don't want, we want exact, real answers right here. Nothing was rounded. Take a step back, see if that makes sense. All right, let's, before we erase all of this, if this is our original function, this is what we call standard form. We also have vertex form for a quadratic. Vertex form would show us, uh, we would be able to see what the vertex is if we were looking at this in vertex form. In vertex form, we kind of we really found that along the way. Right. Yeah, before we divided, before we divided by two right here, right here at this step, before we divided by two, we were almost in vertex form. In order to get to vertex form, vertex form looks like this. And right here, if we just subtract over the 17, we would have f of x equals 2 times x plus 3 squared minus 17. We just move that 17 over. Instead of set equal to 0, it's f of x once again. And that is vertex form. We pretty much found that along the way. And the vertex is h and k. It's always the opposite sign of the number on the inside, the same sign of the number on the outside. That is our vertex. So along the way, we found the vertex. There's, there's other ways to find the vertex. We found it by using the axis of symmetry and plugging that back in, but here's one more way. And if you're solving through completing the square, then you know what the vertex is just by working through those steps. Okay? So, again, that's trying to give you some more examples, all right? Hopefully that helps.